All right, so this is going to be um, the solution to question number 36 from our exam review, uh, which is going to be talking about this check digit class. Um, we are going to be writing two methods of this class. So the first uh, method in part A is going to be the get check method, um, and then the second one is going to be the is valid method. Okay, uh, this class gives us two different methods that we're going to use as helpers. Uh, one of them is called the get number of digits method, uh, which is going to allow us to input a number and return the number of digits in that number. Um, the second one is called the get digit method, which allows us to enter a number and um, another integer, uh, which basically is going to return the uh, digit at that particular integer. All right, so they have a couple examples down here of how those work get number of digits of that number is six, because there are six digits in that number. Uh, get digit of that number and a one is going to return two, because it's the first digit. Uh, fifth digit is a one, so that returns the fifth digit of a one. All right, so uh, we're going to write the get check method for part A. Um, they explain what to do here. So multiply the first digit by seven, second digit by six, third digit by five, so on. Um, then you're going to add all of those up to each other, and then you're going to extract the rightmost digit. And that's our answer. The, the rightmost digit of that sum is the check digit. Okay, so here's an example. With that number, I would do 2 times 7, 8 times 6, 3 times 5, 4 times 4, 1 times uh, 3, and 5 times 2. We add all those products together, we get 106, and then we return the rightmost digit of 6. Here's another example here if you need it. All right, um, to get a uh, correct, uh, complete grade, full credit for this, we need to make sure we use get number of digits and get digit in our answer. So we have to use these helper methods in our answer. Um, if you don't use those helper methods, you actually have to code it yourself, which is way harder anyway. So the helper methods are there to uh, streamline this process and make it a little easier as well. All right, so I'm going to go over to this uh, coding environment right here. Um, this is just online-ide.com. Uh, it'll allow you to code in Java and uh, test it out. One second. All right, this just allows me to, to run our code. Um, I've got some stuff in my main program that's going to allow us to, to check our answers. Um, and I've coded out the two given um, helper methods just so it'll actually work when we run it. Okay, so here we go. Here's our get check method. So I need um, to start with a variable that's going to hold my sum because I have to add all these numbers together. So I'm just going to call it in sum, set it equal to zero. Okay, um, then I chose to make a second variable uh, that's going to keep track of that, that number I'm multiplying by. So it starts as a seven and then goes to six and five and four. So um, I'm going to call it in uh, y and set it equal to seven. All right, so um, then we're going to loop. So we want to loop through the... Uh, number given to us, uh, digit by digit, multiplying by the right numbers and adding each one to my sum. So we're going to do 4 and i equals 0. i is less than, uh, and then this is where we're going to use one of our helpers, get number of digits. Of my parameter num. And then we'll do i plus plus because we're going to go one by one. All right, so now we're going to add the sum, sum plus equals. And then we want to add the, uh, the get digit. So this is where we're going to use our other helper method, get digit. Uh, and we need to put our num in there with which digit we want. Okay, so we want to do get digit um, of, and then num, our parameter. And then uh, the number I want is uh, number one to start out with. So I don't have a number to keep track of that or... I didn't create one up here to keep track of it, but we have this i, right? i is going to be 0, then 1, then 2. Um, and the only problem is I don't want digit 0. I want digit 1. So just do i plus 1 in there. And uh, so that will go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, and then we want to uh, multiply that by um, our y variable. So that's going to multiply by 7 to start out with, which is what I want to happen. And um, the only thing I need, else I need to do inside my loop is that uh, the next time the loop runs, I want to multiply by 6, and then I want to multiply by 5, and 4, and 3. So I need y to uh, decrease by 1 every time. So I do y minus minus inside there. All right, and then uh, we just need to return something. And um, I don't want to return my sum. I want to return the rightmost digit of my sum. And so to access the right digit of your sum, you, you mod by 10. 
So that should do it for us. Um, they gave me one example of this running. Uh, if I call get check of 159, it should return a value of two. Okay, so I have that in my main program here. Uh, just put a little print to, to look at it, and then there it is, check digit of get check, dot get check of uh, 159. So let's run that. And there we go. So I just uh, output of two, perfect. All right, so let's go look at the uh, answer key here for this one. And they did theirs a little differently. This is the canonical solution. So um, they did uh, check is equal to, oh, this is the wrong one, sorry. Forget, forget you saw that for a minute. Here it is. All right, so they have a sum just like we did. And then uh, they didn't make a Y like I did. So they just uh, started the loop and they started the loop at one um, instead of zero, which makes sense. Uh, if you start at one, you have to put an equal to on your inequality there. Uh, but basically the same thing. And then um, instead of doing uh, y and, de and uh, decreasing y by 1 every time, they just did 8 minus i. So it's going to be 8 minus 1, then 8 minus 2, then 8 minus 3, so 7, 6, 5, 4. So that's another way that you can go about it. There's the get digit call, um, and then returning sum mod 10. Okay, so if you want to go through the points real quick, there are four available. Uh, did you call a number of digits and get digit? So check for that. Uh, did you calculate one partial sum? Uh, so that's uh, doing a, a multiplication of the digit times the, the number. Did you calculate all partial sums? So did you add everything together, no bounds errors? Um, and then did you return the last digit of the calculated sum? All right, so there's your point totals for that one. All right, part B. Part B, we have to write the is valid method, uh, which is going to return true. Um, if the parameter num with check digit, so that's an integer parameter, you can see the uh, signature up here or down here. So um, if that parameter represents a number containing a check digit uh, and it will return false if it doesn't. So a um, little bit unclear on this one with their instructions, but uh, if you look at the, the outputs here, especially the explanation, so 1592 returns true. So the number 1592 is a valid combination of a number, 159, and its check digit, 2. So remember, we found the check digit of 159, and we got 2. So you're just concatenating those two things, 1592. So 1593 returns false because the check digit of 159 is 2, and the last digit is not a 2, it's a 3. So basically, for this to work, you want to uh, chop off that last number and do a check digit of a, not a, a get check of the first however many digits. In this example, it's three, but it could be you know six digits or something. Okay, so you do a ch get check of the first ones, um, and then you check and see if that answer is equal to uh, the the digit we chopped off. Okay, so I'm going to do my entire problem in a single line of code. Uh, then I'll show you the canonical solution, which uh, does a few more lines, but same same effect. All right, so I'm going to go back to my check digit class here and uh, scroll down. Um, I have this dummy return because uh, our program would not have run if that's not in there, but we'll, we'll change that. And actually, um, I'm going to change that right now. Um, like I said, single line of code here. So you can just do this all in a single return statement and you're done. Uh, we're returning a Boolean, so we just need to set up a Boolean expression to return and uh, we'll be good to go. Okay, so um, basically I want, to, I want to chop off the last number of this parameter and then I want to put that through my get check method that I just wrote in part A. Okay, so I'm going to do a get check of uh, num with check digit and then to chop off the last digit you divide by 10. All right, we're doing an integer division so it's not going to give us a decimal, it's just going to chop that last number off and we're good to go. All right, then I want to see if that's equal to and I want to see if it's equal to that last digit. Okay, so we can get the last digit just like we did with our sum up here by modding by 10. I'm going to put that in parentheses and do num with check digit mod by 10. Okay, that's pretty much it. It's going to return either a true or a false with that equal equal sign in the middle. And so let's check and see. Let me get rid of these comments here. So I've got the two examples that they provided right there. All right, you can see I get the same two outputs, a true for 1592 and a false for 1593. Okay, I'll show you the canonical solution for that one. That's the one I accidentally showed you already. 
Uh, not that. Let's see. Part B. All right, right there. So there's the is valid method. So they set up a variable check, which is our mod by 10 uh, that I used. Uh, they have a variable num, which is the dividing by 10. All right, so I use that too. And then they did get check of num. So I just put the divide by 10 right inside the get check instead of creating another variable. And then they uh, went and saw if a check was equal to new check and return true, return false. Okay, really this, this if statement thing, you don't need it. They could have just returned check equal equal new check and that would have been done. Okay, so uh, let's go through the points real quick and then we'll be done with this one. Um, obtains check digit of num with check digit. Yep, so we did that. Um, obtains number remaining in num with check digit after check digit is removed. Um, so, obtains number remaining. Okay, so the dividing by 10 basically. So the check digit is uh, modding by 10, uh, number remaining is dividing by 10. So we did both of those. Uh, calls get check on number without check digit. So we did that. Uh, compares check digit with num with check digit. Uh, so equal, equal for that, and uh, returns a true or false, depending on the result from the previous comparison. Uh, and we did that. So it's all in there. Again, this is another way to do it. My way looks like this, a little more concise. Both work the same way.